Jonathan and Katharina are present and we are having a team meeting focused on developing a protocol and methodology for planning that is more efficient than what we've done in the past. Monday, February 13. Good day, world. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me drop some knowledge here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is some of the open source product development methodology for planning. We treat everything as a product of open source ecology because we're into open source product development and uh, throughout the years. Uh, this is a summary of what I've learned to date on, on planning. So the goal, okay, so the, first of all, this is, uh, if you go to planning on a wiki, that's where this document is, but I'll go to the, the broad vision for why plan and why understand a common protocol. The, the big vision for planning and development in general is that we crack the boundaries of current organizational methodologies where typically you've got large organizations but with the open source model of open documentation uh, there's a, an emergent new possibility where where organizational structure can decrease significantly and instead of kind of the corporations ruling the world and lots of lack of ethics being the norm we can create um, tribes, I like the word tribe now, since yesterday, we can create development tribes that do very, very serious work. Think of like a distributed 150 person organization that is as powerful as any major, major corporation minus all the abuse. So for that, a common language is, is needed. If you talk about open source product development in general, we have a whole methodology of the development template where there's a taxonomy of development steps. If everybody understands that taxonomy and people are working together, then they have a common language of being able to find content on a publicly editable venue like a wiki. We use a wiki. So since a wiki is a database and it's a large mess, the collaborative literacy means that we use a common language and that, la that language could be expressed as a taxonomy, like a, which is in the development template. But for example, if you pull up something like uh, planning documents or, or goals, say project goals, project one vision, project uh, scope, project budget, etc. Those are all assets we can find. As long as we know what what the keywords are, like those those uh, what I call the taxonomy, like here when we talk about planning, it's about vision, scope, strategy, uh, recruiting plan, budgets, development methodology, roadmaps, sequencing, critical path, task breakdown, supporting documents. Uh, if you know those words, you can then a large team of people, wherever they are across the world, can collaborate on a process when all the docs are open there's a wiki to edit this and people understand the language of what the process is and then uh, to start plan planning I mean so so what I did here is define the the critical assets which typically end up as a roadmap and critical path task breakdowns and sequencing typically we work off a roadmap and a critical path like critical path is like the minimum viable planning product I would say critical path is that which you end up doing it's like your calendar here's the days by days and here's what you do on each day okay so now critical distinction between agile and waterfall waterfall means that you create this kind of process it's you can when if you look at this the full scope of this planning process is kind of bureaucratic well you can strip it down and you know if you have no time you just generate yourself a critical path but the difference between this, the waterfall and the agile here is that we're, use, we're putting this entire document into cloud editable format so it can be updated any single time, any single step is taken. Because the weakness of planning, there's an inherent fault to planning. As soon as you do anything, the plan changes. So uh, whoever denies that, then they need to t get a reality check because any new in an agile process any new information means that you update your planning process if you're really smart and you've got a lot of experience you can plan something and it goes as planned 
But if you're talking about wicked problems, nope. The first step you make, things go awry, etc. So you got to keep keep constantly upgrading. So in this open source product development deal here, I have the two arrows going back and forth. It's a totally circular process. You always go back. The process needs to allow that you constantly go back and forth to update the planning document so you can do a first cut. And yeah, it's great, and but you got to keep working it one till it's actually meaningful and the second part is so you keep rehashing it rehashing it look at all the dependencies you know study the process to make sure your dates are not off and then once you start doing it you get new information and therefore you update the plan so so that's the kind of the critical part it's an updatable living document that at the end of the day when you made a lot of changes in the project say it took a year to do the project you you can compare if you're updating your documents and you, there's a lot of changes perhaps the final planning document the stuff you actually did may differ quite significantly from what you have planned now compare so what you want to do is save the versions like save it on a weekly or monthly basis if you compare the first week's plan to the actual plan you ended up at the end you can actually learn from that so you use that as a comparison okay this is what i thought i was going to do and this is what actually happened so that's a learning that's a way to get learning happening in an organization. That's about it. Um, there's standard assets you need to generate to do a proper planning process. I think we all pretty much agree on. But the critical things are how you document so that everyone knows that, and it's apparent to everybody and that you keep updating it and there's a taxonomy that you know what all the assets that are to be generated are. Period. Okay, so can we go through each one of these to clarify what... Um each one means starting on okay. page one, slide one. Okay, so let's let's okay. take a look at slide one. We start with vision. Can, can I just finish talking? Okay. Um, what I would like to do is to try and dispel and to record this for the future to dispel misunderstandings or you know situations where we think we're on the same page. Uh, can you, for each one, give a concrete example? For example, like you say, vision is what is the goal. Can you give a concrete example? Can we do this? Okay. Mm -hmm. Step number one, vision. What is the goal? Product definition, as much detail as possible. Um, use the vivid vision process by Cameron Harold. That's, he's a coach. Um, the CEO should do this. So vision is, what are you doing? What do you want to do? Uh, like, we want to do affordable housing for everybody. Let's just say that. But that's like, that's great. It doesn't tell you anything as far as what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you scope it out. Uh, so now you might start getting into some more details. The scope, what's included in the development effort? Define a clear minimum viable product such that uh, if you need to strip down things because you're not on track, you can make sure that you're not violating your minimum viable product. So that's that's critical for recovery plans where recovery plans are one part of the overall development process as we're going forward and we see that we're missing things you could either there's several things you can do at that point one of them being a, a recovery plan so then you can guide your recovery plans by saying okay as long as we're very clear on exactly what we're doing what our minimum viable product is we know what we are allowed and not allowed to do in our uh, subsequent development process. Okay. Well, what's an example here? A scope. Okay, so the scope sorry, will Jonathan, include... Jonathan, you want to say something? Yeah, I was just saying, like, the uh, scope or, you know, the minimum viable product, uh, what, what are some examples? I mean, is that just in research and development? How do you define the scope? Is that well, <laughs> whatever. business perspective? Or? Okay, we go back to what we're talking about, and right now we're talking about... Um, a pl planning process so planning process of a of an ambitious project a complex project that warrants extensive planning like open building institute two-year milestones yeah does that answer the question uh, right I mean okay, that, so that basically mm -hmm. a, a project would be the, the because the difference between development and a project from what I understand is that a development is ongoing yeah, and that a volume. project has a beginning uh, and, 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 and Correct. An end time frame. 
Right. That's correct. Yeah, and that, okay. those are some of the other assets here. But scope has to define what is your minimum viable product, and, and I get to the timeline and all that other okay. stuff. I, um, I, I have a question. I have four questions here. One is like, um, let me ask two questions before you cut off. Um, one is, I, I would rather you give a different example about scope because I want it's too mad, it's too confusing. And the other one is, when we're talking about scope at this point, for example, like say applying this to OBI, are we talking about the scope of OBI, the, the, the project, the organization, or the scope of OBI for the yearly plan? Scope of the OSC OBI collaboration, which is a two-year period of which we're six months into. Okay. That's what's critical because we're talking about planning, so you're talking about involving other parties like OSC assets. And then for me to run OSC properly, I need to know what my responsibilities are for that whole duration so I can plan other projects accordingly because this is not the only thing that I'm doing. So, so an organizational scope, right? Is that what you're essentially saying? Like an organizational well, scope and even your integration with each other? Well, the scope is for whatever the planning is and what is the planning of. It's of the two-year collaboration between OSC and OBI. Okay. Now... MVP, like if we talk about the two-year planning process, what's the MVP? Well, we know that we've got some MVPs like a living building challenge compliant I, I home, MVP is. minimum That's viable good. product, okay. something that we're saying by the end of those two years, we are going to get. We know some of that already. We know that it includes a minimum of two significant prototypes, and I think the number was three, of complete builds of the CDCO home and aquapana greenhouse it would mean things like documentation to me it currently it means training program material production facility and machines that's within the what that's what we promised in a kickstarter so so we start by saying okay we got to do those things that's our minimum viable product for the define some things and of course you get more detail into it it once you finally lay down the critical path that MVP must be on that critical path. So this is start, starting of some of the explicit things we're talking about. Okay. Um, so a little, question, little question there is that, you know, when I think about minimum viable product, then I think about maximum viable product, which thinks so if I'm doing the minimal amount, then I'm not really doing a whole lot. So from a psychological standpoint, right. is the minimal viable product, is that, like the bare necessity. Yep, that's the the, the definition. Something. Yeah, the definition of minimum viable product is that what you can settle for. Now that doesn't mean that's what you plan for. Obviously, uh, not. I mean, if we're planning for MVP at max, we get MVP. So of course the plan is much more broad and ambitious. But as you go along, you have to know where's the cutoff for what's acceptable. So that when you are in the okay in the critical path and you see you miss deadlines because we've got too many responsibilities you have to differentiate between when you can let certain things go because that was a bell and whistle or whether that is absolutely critical for the success of the project so when we define that up front we define the MVP but that's just one of the assets in a scope the scope includes all the stuff that we're doing documentation a house that's such and such so we want to scope it out as detailed as possible at the beginning of the planning narrative so that we know where we are going we can't just say oh we're gonna just plan like for, if we're planning for the two years we can't just say that it's sufficient to plan for the first build and be satisfied now we're at a point where we really want to do the two-year planning because we have not done that which means that if we have not done that any road will get us there. We may or may not get the milestones because we don't even know what the milestones are. We have promised certain things for the Kickstarter, but where are the act where's the actual substance behind that? So our paths and budgets and roadmaps and so forth. So, okay, so, the, so, so what you're saying is that because there's a, a dynamic environment, it's always changing. Um, you know, it's really kind of sometimes hard to define success in you know different things unless it's like a waterfall. If you meet a minimum viable product that is kind of a, a milestone within the scope that is a key performance indicator or success indicator, and I think that's one of the questions for myself is like, well, how do I know that I'm doing a good job? 
mean to me because I'm still trying to understand my role in, in the whole narrative of what we're doing. To address uh, that, just, you know, that's why I think so. Yeah. To address that, I just added, if you're um, looking at page one, I don't see any of you in the document, by the way, so you should go into, because I, in the introduction, I, I, I stated that this process is highly agile, and according to that, I have just added a metrics arrow, or item, b because you just said that that's critical, and it is. So as we define a scope, we have to know how we're we're meeting the scope, so definitely add the metrics in there. So I added metrics to that diagram. So please join that if you have the link. Um, we are on it, but we're on it on the wiki. That's why you don't see us. Well, uh, go into the edit mode because you can edit stuff in there too if you don't like stuff. So because it's up for negotiation. So, so uh, s I don't have um, scope. So in, typically we do sharing we share stuff so we can since this is important stuff we're going to share it with I, Jonathan I have another important question about and this Katarina. and I think that this has been a trap for us over and over again um, so we talked about vision we define what is the goal mm -hmm. right and then we, we we go to scope now scope says what is included in the developed effort during the project so at this point we're already talking about products yeah we're starting to talk right. about products right but so say we agree that the, the goal is to uh, make affordable housing available to everyone, right? Yep. But what we cannot skip directly to products because before there is any discussion is how to get there. What products best serve that? Yeah. Is it the training? Is it building houses? And to me, that is the glaring uh, hole. Well, we our... already defined some products in our Kickstarter. Right, but my argument on my planning protocol is that just because we said something last year, especially since we often make decisions under pressure or may not have full information, doesn't mean that we haven't learned a lot. doesn't mean that it's set in stone and that we still know that our greatest goal is to do this, but that doesn't mean that we cannot reevaluate that. We should reevaluate that at every point. We sh can and should reevaluate that at every point, but un until that discussion happens, the assumption is what we say is that we're, we're, which we're going to do. Right, but that's what I'm so saying. Until that, we have discussion, a... that, that assumption should not be there. The discussion should be in between vision and scope, meaning are we still on track? We still believe what we said. Before we, we go all out on how to deliver products, we should assess whether those products still make sense. I believe that's included in the overall agile methodology. It's a constant back and forth process. But it's not set here as a deliverable. Okay, well, a, I mean, I'm assuming that, but if... Um, again, assumptions, it should be here about... But a, a discussion, so a discussion is a deliverable? A discussion is hot air. No, deliverables are products, the minutes, work products. Uh, the minutes of that discussion are where we can s release minutes that say, in light of this learning, this and this and this, we decided that the product we originally thought uh, was either correct or incorrect or decided to reorient the course. That's, in this, in, that's organizational learning. It's very important. Yeah, okay. So put it in there. So where do we keep track of such stuff? So that's some of the substance for this process. I think so it it's a needs to be a subtopic. Like I have it on review the project's goals. That's what I have on my annual planning, which includes discussing. It's under vision, right? Um, okay, so we can add a review. That, uh, review product uh, log. Those discussions. Right. We're not planning for the first time, right? This is, comes in, the, in, a, in a sequence of years. So actually assessing how what we did in the past served our vision and what changes we need to make to do should come even before scope. So that assessment of what came before or what we decided before, even if we haven't executed, like does it still make sense to say this, right? Okay. So you can have review. Okay. Everywhere. I don't have editing rights. Can you add review? Uh, I think you do. I made it open to everybody. I don't have them. You don't have them? No. Um, I did already add review. Okay. Um, Where is it? It's this arrow here. Okay. okay so, so. But that comes so up. So up. That's upwards. That's at the top. Not not in the budget. Yeah. The, Sorry. the vision is the goal, and I guess the goal would 
be the maximum viable product, right? Is what we're actually trying to shoot for. Well, I mean, again, I think we need to make a distinction between the vision of a project and a product. A product serves a project's goal. So that's why I was insisting on this distinction between project and, and product, right? I mean, uh, the eco house that we have right now is a product that serves the OBI's goals, right? So we got to talk about, that's why I think that you got to kind of like, in the beginning of the year, it's not, um, it's not, uh, unnecessary to go back to bases and say these this is the vision for the project and these are the products that we think serve that vision like reassess that just because we said in the past that it was going to be a school doesn't mean that it's still a school today yeah i mean you know for me like when we talk about a vision like it usually encompasses a comprehensive picture of people tools and organizations and how they work together. And so when we talk about a vision, it's like, well, we want to solve or, or make, you know, a house affordable, right? Right, <laughs> I agree. But I think it's, there's, there's a lot more to that. The vision is pretty broad and there's like, you know, we have a training facility, we have, you know, this nice building that's set up that we built that's there for educating people. We have a workshop that's, you know, students are coming. And I guess just putting some more meat into the actual uh, vision of like, where people can actually taste it Kind of a deal. Well, um, so I mean, that's the vivid vision. So that's a technical term, actually. Look it up on the wiki, right, so actually. So, uh, but that's like a full visioning process. In, you know, and I think that's what Cameron Harold, you know, has, has gone to. And I, I agree. I'm just saying that for so, so those who may be listening, but also, too, for myself, is that it has to be really emphasized what is the, the end goal, right? And what does that look like? And for OBI and OSD, in the particular to your uh, scope, what is that vision? Yeah, no, that, that has to be there. Uh, yeah, I mean, right. that's well, exactly I mean, what I said. Saying, do we have that, or is that, you know, fully... No, we don't. I don't think we do. Okay. We have uh, uh, an origin the original documents we created last year, but that's what I'm thinking. I mean, we learned a lot in the past <clears throat> year, so it's time to go back to that and refine it with everything we've learned. Couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. So, moving on. So, um, scope is uh, what's included. Strategy is, strategic approach is necessary to increase effectiveness. And the typ typical strategy points we want to consider in our development process is leveraging collaboration because we've got project openness, an ethical approach, distributive economic goals. That's That's definitely allows us to leverage collaboration that which should be a central point of the strategy that that we want to use now what's the, what's the basic example that you can give as far as lever le leveraging collaboration versus not a recruiting plan that's one second is refining our taxonomy and and development methodology so we can include people can i ask you a very basic right, question right, but i mean i'm talking about more on a basic level for people who are clueless about collaboration yeah how do we invite people to who are clueless about collaboration yeah i mean when you say strategy like there are a lot of people that have different strategies what are the different strategies that people would use like some people don't people just want to do it by themselves right and people that choose that strategy, they don't leverage collaboration, which, which which then does what? I mean, especially to the project people, there's a lack of productivity, correct? That's right. And we're, so making the distinction for what it looks like in in the framework of open source product development, that is a that is what we do. So. Right. Well, I'm just saying, because a lot of people coming in don't have the norms that we have. Right. And when we say lever leveraging collaboration, that's like normal to us. That's a sure. new term, and cause I know that you've said many times, like, we're working on this project by ourselves, and we're all doing it individually by ourselves, and we're not documenting, then we're really losing out on, on really that energy, and I don't know when you said something about velocity, that basically, which is the momentum to, to get stuff done, right? Yeah. Yep. That's exactly right. Okay. I have a question. Is anyone else recording this, just in case my recording... Yeah. 
I'm going to suggest that, but, you know. I am. I, I'm yeah. do, taking so, the video and yeah. recording. I'm glad okay. you said something. Okay. Um, I, I have a, a, a couple a couple questions about strategy or a couple things I would like to discuss. One is a very basic question. Is strategy the how are we going to accomplish this? Like, is that how you did, like, yeah. explain strategy? Strategy is how. how? It's a strategic how. Okay. Okay. So it's a strategic how. Okay. Now, my other question, one thing that I feel that um, tends to get lost just because usually we're like, trying to move really fast is we talk about uh, you said that one of the, the issues one of the things that should be addressed here in the strategy is recruiting right mm -hmm. now one thing that I feel that we often get bogged down or that you know comes back to bite us in that part um, is the fact that we talk about how to, to recruit but we do not talk about all the documentation and everything that needs to generate to take to make the best of the recruits right to make the best of new team members that's usually where we get in trouble is we're not prepared exactly so that comes into the strategy as well absolutely to leverage collaboration you have to have a way to leverage collaboration so that would be uh, training includes training includes but before even their structures. training, we have to generate the assets for the training, right? So right. it has to. So exactly. it's kind of that order in the rollout order that gets confusing, and that's I, I feel that's a lot why we've we've not succeeded in collaboration as much as possible is because part of the recruiting that. plan is to is to generate assets to onboard people to onboard people. You got to have assets to onboard them with, like your training. That's part of recruiting. So, recruiting would involve that, and we're starting that. So, moving right al along to initial timeline, is that it on the strategy point? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I would also say that training is a huge part, and I would agree with Katarina that the quality of training and, and also making sure that people have actually gotten mastery. And of course, you know, that goes into finding what is the minimal viable product in terms of training. But I also think is that what is the, the minimum requirements rather for training? Uh, just because we have people that, that want to come in and that's where, you know, we're, we don't fully know. But of course, with the recruiting plan, that's one of the things that I, you know, I like what you did with the free CAD exam. And I think if we can see more, uh, assets generated towards assessment, that would be great. Mm-hmm, definitely. Minimum requirement for training must be defined as well for successful recruiting. Uh, because we're developing all these assets contemporaneously. Okay, so initial timeline. So we want to define a specific start and stop date with major milestones along the path to set clear boundaries on the project. And for example, facilitate questions like, can we do that? Well, okay, we have this specific time to that time. We can define what we can do. Because, I mean, you'd be amazed how if, you, if you're not clear about your timeline. And I think that Kickstarter, I, I, mean, I would say that for Kickstarter, Kickstarter is one of those things where you, you either set a definite timeline for that or it's like it drags forever. Um, we well especially in our case because we said okay this is actually for two years so you have to say okay when is it from when to when so that we can have certain milestones like for example when do we release all our webinars and uh, my initial thought would be well a logical place is to say we release it after the campaign is over the campaign is over in august 2018 things like that so you can make better decisions you know it just helps you facilitate decisions yeah mm -hmm. So timeline, like right now, exactly, when, when is our, I think for now, it's when is the official end of the project. That, that determines when do we have to haul ass to build the last house. And we should say, okay, we're not running beyond that because we want to move on to other things. So, okay. Recruiting plan. So once again, the strength of the open source development method relies on the ability to leverage voluntary development tribes which is indispensable for wicked development efforts. So I'm using technical terms, tribes and wicked. Uh, tribes are groups of <laughs> aligned people 
I like that form of organization because that's very historical. People have evolved as tribes, and now we can um, uh, treat this effort as tribes too. I think it makes a lot of sense. I just read a book on that, another, or heard about that concept through my stuff here. Um, wicked refers to complex problems. We're solving a wicked problem, and we should be very clear about that. So, uh, for that, recruiting for wicked problems, recruiting voluntary talent uh, helps. So, therefore, no serious OSPD project, open source product development project, should be without a serious recruiting plan and training plan. Minimum requirements for training must be defined. So, that's just what we talked about. So, so how do you reconcile having the recruiting? First, you said that strategy included the recruiting plan, and now you have the recruiting plan after the initial timeline? Oh, uh, this is not in any order. This is circular. So, so I did not pay attention to too much to to this. Um, no, but yeah, so but I, yeah, we should we should actually do that the order in which things are done because again, that's been a source of. Couldn't agree with you more on that. In which we are trying to, you know, do something that should be done further down the line that has requirements. Right. So maybe then, then that goes into the sequencing, which is later, which is on the right-hand side. Sequencing of the entire process is one of the deliverables. So maybe we, uh, we that's there's definitely room for that. Is that good? Well, no. One thing is the sequencing of the project. The other thing is the sequencing of the planning. Right. I'm talking about the sequencing of the planning. Mm-hmm. The recruiting plan should well, I mean be the, a, a under strategy. The roadmap should include the planning too. I mean, the roadmap should have a complete work breakdown structure, task breakdown. So that should be in a in a roadmap. So right, this is right not now, going what under the rug. What we're doing is defining a protocol for planning, right? Yeah, that's right. So if you make it completely circular, then we're going to be plunged into the same confusion as in the past, which is you can start at any point and just go around in circles, right? We're trying to get some clarity here so that when we start doing it, we don't have to, you know, we know where to start. It's like, I don't want to have to think about this again unless it's necessary. I just want to know this is what uh, we're doing. I we're think doing in this kind of methodology, you can start at any point if you have well-defined product goals and start and end points, that's why I go back to the timeline. When you have that, yes, you can, you can go can around in circles. Point, you already defined that you got to do the vision, scope, and initial timeline first. So already there, it's not at any point. Uh, well, I say any point of time in a sense that you can touch it. Doesn't mean you have to complete it. You can touch on it because we already touched on it. We already yeah, know that we from Kickstarter. Yeah, we as a team have to have some kind of common ground. It well, that's why... For, for an individual who says, I'm just going to start with the budget now, and then I'm going to go back. But if you need to coordinate with other people, there has to be okay. clarity about that. So that's where the relevance of the recruiting plan and the assumption that we're recruiting copious amounts of people that can take all these steps in parallel. That's the major, major assumption that I did not reveal yet. We're saying that we're defining a taxonomy, taxonomy of steps that, if structured properly, you can swarm a massive amount of people on them and get them, get them, get problems solved really quickly. So that's the assumption. If we are one, if we are just one of us, then first of all, it's not even possible to go through this proper planning process, as evidenced by former performance of the project. Right. Right? So the assumption is clearly that we have a lot of people because we've spent the energy to recruit, and then we can allocate people to different tasks pending some initial definitions, such as open source equitable no, housing for everybody. That. So, on the one hand, the planning includes a step that, include, that requires the rowing up recruiting plan. On the other hand, the recruiting plan itself assumes that there's already recruits. Well, the, the question is, what stage of completion is each of these steps? If the recruiting plan, as at present, is not available, because we're working on it, that's, an, that's a step. But once we are way down the road and we've got the recruiting protocol to the point that we've got a billion dollar worth of, of volunteer contributions per year, 
that process can probably disappear of this planning narrative. I mean, it should sh still be there for historical records, but like when you're starting a project, but at that point, we don't do any of that because, or we do minimum okay. because it's already right. largely but, autonomously right. underway. Right. So you, 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 you have your eyes on the future and I get that, but right now we have to address a very pressing issue, which is how do we, the current team, plan and avoid the pitfalls of the past without having to spend too much time drawing up a plan that's only going to work in five years, right? I mean, I understand... We're that. not. We're doing... Because, okay, we are not doing that because we have a timeline and product definition. If we know the timeline is to build three houses by August 2018, we're not going to spend three years developing the recruiting plan. We can only allot right. so much, so much energy, yeah. and that's that comes out of the sequencing. And I guess that you make me think about prioritization. The roadmap right. reflects prioritization. But that's what I'm calling for. But you right, but the roadmap requires all of the other things as well. What other things? Well, the roadmap assume either says that oh, you got to make a budget. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean the thing is that's why I think this right. circle, the circular arrows here are very critical, because this is a process. As soon as you find one thing about one thing, you can, uh, you can at best like if you have a team, you can I, seed I all these different I, assets I and keep working on them. I understand all of that, but right now we do not have a team, and we need clarity as to where we start. We have to do the yearly planning now, right? Right. So the question is, where do we determine as a team that we're going to start and what process are we going to follow? Yeah, I mean, what, what I'm doing here is going through a general process. If we, can, we can then, the next step would be, if we uh, like a proce the process, then we can say, okay, now let's get to it. What are the priorities in this process? And we say, okay, given the resources we have, we blow right to these certain steps and avoid okay. the others. All right, I agree. Can, can so let's continue going yes. through just what's what the big... Big picture is so budget. The scope, strategy, and milestones should be checked against the budget. Mm -hmm. Time, people, and money are critical resources in a given project. Time can be optimized by clear goals. People can be leveraged with a recruiting plan, and a budget should be allocated clearly to prevent cost overruns. Okay. Okay. Now, the development methodology itself. For effective use of recruits, everyone needs to be clear on the product development methodology. So what I'm saying is that as much as possible, we, we school everybody as far as how this, the development process works and planning process so that the requirement there is the development methodology itself must be documented clearly so that more people could participate even autonomously when they just read that off somewhere in the corner without even us telling them they can actually read that and join the prod project because they've actually been schooled up on their own even so another part there is that um, work logging Needs to, needs to be an essential part of the methodology to, faci to facilitate development time binding. What that means is that if we're going to build upon each other's work, the only way you're going to know what's been done is by, by logs, like a work log. So that's, that's that very important part. If we're assuming, or, or, okay, if we're assuming that we're striving for an autonomous scaling process, the development time binding is an absolute requirement. That you can achieve through work logs and logs in general so okay so planning narrative for open source product development page two uh, the the main main point there is that it's a highly iterative process that's why the cir circular arrows the preliminary state uh, if you want to call it that um, we s go through as much of that as possible I think a lot of those things are pretty pretty critical like if you don't know what the vision is, we can't go forward. If we don't know what the scope is, you know, we're going to be misprioritizing time. If we don't have a strategy, we won't get there eff efficiently, and therefore we'll do less. Timeline and milestones allows us to budget our time. MVP definition is absolutely critical because if we don't know what we're developing, then we definitely can't. Anything that we develop will be developed, but it might not work. Uh, a recruiting plan. <laughs> Is kind of, I mean, for, I mean, I really say it's it's critical because we we are learning that the scope of the task we're talking about um, 
what I mentioned is we're talking about wicked problems here. We're so trying to solve a wicked problem. We're not going to do it without a recruiting plan. Budget, or it'll be so slow that we'll lose everybody by the time we're done or, or die off by the time we're done. <laughs> so budget, and I mean, that's clear. You're going to have to have the money to back up the actions you want to take. Uh, budget or resources, you know, it doesn't have to be monetary. If you have, if you're in a resource economy based economy, then and have a lumber <laughs> mill and machines, you can generate all your building materials for free. So it's not necessarily money, though typically it, it is. Development methodology, um, that's the kind of like less important business. As long as we know the development methodology, it's uh, it's pretty good because we can guide it. But of course, you want as many people to know that as possible. So that's the preliminary stage. Refining working stage. So, so I I'm, I make a point that cloud editable format should be used here, such as Google Docs, so that we can update these things as soon as anything new information comes in. Agile waterfall refers to it's kind of the hybrid I call this. We have serious top-down planning because we're taking on ambitious goals, which is characteristic of waterfall. However, the difference is we are using cloud editable open docs, and that's not what waterfall does. They they do a top-down thing. People force force results along a certain path. We're not doing that. As soon as anything is learned, we reevaluate. And that hence the need for editable docs. Otherwise, the management of those docs is simply impossible. No matter what kind of a budget you have, if you have a billion dollar budget, you're not going to do it, you're going to lose it after enough complexity. Pending enough complexity, you're going to lose it. Timelines and recovery plans. So uh, I suggest a window of opportunity approach, uh, as we've been taking at OSC, uh, because that produces an urgency towards peak performance. Developers are expected to function under expectations of peak performance, so that's an expectation that we can we can set. And we say, okay, are you getting into a serious development effort? Are you ready for it? And therefore, we can select for those kinds of developers up front, as opposed to having people drop off because they're not really ready for the work. So if a window of time is missed, then there are three things, three options. Delay, reduce, or recover. So delays. So delays are generally not accepted by definition of the window of opportunity method, uh, and they're not preferred because there's two alternatives, which is you just say you reduce your goals. We say, okay, are we still meeting, meeting the MVP? Well, if we reduce our goals to meet our deadlines and still meet the MVP, we are okay. We just go and shift to higher gear for the next milestone. Now, goal recovery is the preferred route. So that means we can recruit additional team members, hence the importance of an autonomous HR function. So we can allocate more funding to a problem if we're behind schedule, like we can just buy ourselves out uh, pending a, our budget. <clears throat> and then we can revisit its strategy as far as to how to do it better. Now, when we re-examine uh, or reallocate resources, we can uh, reduce time on other tasks if they're not as important, like if we see the whole plan. Um, or we can just eliminate them as long as the MVP is reached. So that's why you got to know your MVP. So that's the... I, I have some mm -hmm. questions about this. This has been a, something I've struggled with. So first of all, I would like to understand what is your definition of window of opportunity. Because window of opportunity is, is described as a favorable opportunity for doing something that must be seized immediately if it is not to be missed. Meaning, it's one day I wake up and say, oh, it's sunny, I have to go take, a, take care of my garden right now. So that sounds a little bit strange in the context of planning, right? Because planning assumes that you are creating that opportunity, it's not just something that happens. Yep, window of opportunity definition here used is set time for a task. A task that does not, a task with finite boundaries, a task that does not stretch forever even when it's when it's not complete. So you don't continue working on a task, you go on to the next task in the in the critical path. Okay. So now how do you address seeing that first of all a more formal protocol for assessment of when Windows opportunities have been missed, which happens quite often, and a strategy for dealing with things that do not get done but are actually a requirement 
for what's for what I'm doing next week, right? So say we have one week to do this planning and we do not finish the planning in one week. Do we just go at it without a plan? Or do we, you know what I mean? Like there's all of, usually there's requirements. Okay, one safety. question at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, the last one, which I remember is, well, the answer is in our planning. What did we set for that process? That's why we have to define timelines. At the, that's why I use okay. timelines as a critical aspect of the pre preliminary right. planning process. Okay. Then, okay, then one second. thing that I strongly suggest we incorporate have a, like a methodology is we talked about mix, minimal and maximum viable products is in our planning we tend to come up with the best case scenario, right? See, in one week we can do all of this. We never have a plan B, right? So we should, for every item, every window of opportunity, there should be, if we do not meet the goal, this is what we do. We should not have to have emergency meetings. Uh, the critical path should define plan Bs. Okay. That discussion they should be there. have not thus far ever. Uh, if you look at some of the critical paths on the, uh, like the critical paths, which we're kind of modifying it, because uh, critical path standard is that you have a bubble, you have start date and date duration. It's a comp it's like four bubbles. It's pretty hard to actually tactically update all of that. So all I'm doing is taking bubbles and the editable docs, stretching them in and out against the timeline which is on the x-axis. Immediately you get a uh, start and duration. In that whole process, you have all these like, and I, I'm not super familiar with the critical path methodology, but they have things like hooks and like there's terminology for what they do, but they have backups already mapped if that goes there right. there's a backup arrow but for I plan like B to suggest so that is formalized into our process because it has not been this far okay so Especially with the because what happens is because we are a lot of the times off most of the time we're un, on uncharted territory sometimes it's difficult for us to assess just how long something is going to take or the complexity okay so we miss the ball we drop the ball a lot on that okay thing. so um on page one, I added critical path with plan B's to emphasize the plan B's that should be in a critical path. Okay. Okay. Um, but that was another question you had. What was uh, the first question you had? No, that was the question was what happens. Basically, it comes up as like we should have a, a protocol in place to when we fail, the, when we miss the window of opportunity, right? How to move on. That's the plan B. That's all I wanted. Yeah. yeah, and that's a constant. That would be your weekly meeting, and you evaluate your critical path. <coughs> and at that meeting, you say, Whoops, this isn't happening, or yes, this is happening, or had schedule. And you can shift stuff and make plan B's um, at more critical, you know, as needed. But you should have as much of that thought about to begin with. Because when you're making a critical path, when you actually sit, that's why I have, once again, the refining part, which which is that part, you, you do your preliminary stage, you just jot as much down as you can, but then you sleep on it. The next day you say, oops, okay, I forgot about this thing, about what needs to happen in order for this step to happen. So you keep refining and keep thinking about it and getting more experience or learning or getting it reviewed so that people say, okay, that's realistic. And wherever there is risk points, you can, we can identify risk points, like maybe things in red which are like very high risk, meaning that we haven't done it, we don't know how much it takes, there's dependencies that are out of, out of our control completely, okay. etc. I like that. So I think that one thing that should accompany every step of both planning and executing is, is a assessment, like honest assessment of not okay. only just predictive assessment, like what we think. What, identifying those risks, those fire risks, but also, you know, assessment of what. We talk a lot about assessing what we already did, but assessing what we, the planning itself, right? Like how high risk is this? Um, yeah, yeah, and we could even color bubbles like, you know, lighter, darker, red, right. red stuff. So risk assessment, b build that into the, the critical path process. Right. The critical path document, right. so you see like, okay this is hard it's got a red line around it okay we better make sure we've got all our wits around that step right. and make sure we don't mess yeah. that one up etc yeah. okay yeah, i mean and i would really like to emphasize i i think it's brought this down quite a bit we, we usually kind of like we, I, th I believe we practice guerrilla organization meaning we just react and, and bounce back and 
so far there's been nothing that completely stopped us on our tracks but I think that fortifying this idea that we're an uncharted territory and to have a plan B should be like a highlight of how we approach because say so, like say something goes wrong right and it doesn't make sense for us to have a three hour meeting to address it like if say I'm working in the workshop with a team something that goes wrong I know what needs to be done because there's a plan B that I don't need to convene a three hour of meeting of course that's not being that's simply not, not being caught with that's your, what I'm saying. Like with I your pants down elevate yeah. that to yeah. a requirement something that we are required to do okay okay then require that go ahead Okay. Are you requiring that? I'm requiring that. Okay, well then it's required. Right. For critical stuff, right? I mean, if we're late to a meeting, that doesn't need a plan B, but for highly critical stuff like we had la we had last with the last workshop where, I mean, the foundation took a lot longer than we expected, <laughs> and we had no plan B. Yeah, the, the rain. <laughs> the rain. But the rain wasn't even a big deal. The rain, we, we weren't, yeah, was a little bit, but, you know. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, but I mean, it did delay like a one week, and that one week was exactly. you know, run up to the to the line. Exactly, and and the, the, just the fact that it took us a lot longer to do the foundation than we expected, it just did. Even though we've done foundations in the past, this one was huge. Um, so we did not have a plan B. We kind of bounced back as we usually do, but you know, already knowing that if this fails, this is what exactly what we're going to do would have saved us stress, so psychologically it would have been better and would have made us more agile as well, because we could just bounce So basically back. a risk assessment would be in place, like, you know, yeah. we need to do a risk assessment for each. Yeah, for critical I things, guess, right? I mean, we got to yeah, identify critical what's right. critical and what's not, right? We shouldn't have a plan B for every single yeah. thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, working stage narrative slide three. So... So the working stage, uh, once we have the preliminary stage and we did some refining, then we can create documents which are not BS documents but real documents. So the first cut of your critical path, if it's not refined and bounced back and forth and updated, it's just a BS document. It doesn't correspond to reality. So the point about the critical path it must be updated continuously as reality shakes down predictions revisions should be done weekly and old copies should be saved so that at the end of the project we can evaluate the final path and the initial path for learning purposes which is easy once again with the docs okay i, I do have um a, 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 what i think is an important suggestion here is that we do talk a lot about this and we do it sometimes we do update our critical path sometimes but as far as I know never have we ever assessed why we failed to meet the critical path never ever recorded that why did this not work like Jonathan said it rained so that delays is a week right just having that kind of memory will help us make better decisions in the future yeah so we save those and we can go back back to them to review them that's the that's the point. But you have to have it in the no, first place. No, but I'm not saying just it. change the critical path with no reason, no documentation of why we changed it, but actually record why we didn't, you know, why this happened. Definitely annotate the docs. Yeah. Okay. That's what I said. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So the critical point about the critical path is that it should have every task breakdown structure item. In other words, I want to be able to look at, personally, I want to be able to look at a critical path at the beginning of a project. Of course, you can have sub-critical paths for this step and that step, but at the end of the day, you want to see how every step fits on a calendar because the, because the critical path is timed by, by a date on the x-axis. So you have to be able to reconcile that all the tasks are fit on that path. If you have a list of tasks elsewhere, and it might be hard to... To, to know whether that's all been acknowledged in a simple visual, visually reviewable document. So that's why I'd like to see that everything is on that critical path. You're not missing steps. Okay, so now we're, we're hit another, e another thing that has been a, an issue for me, which is uh, information architecture and usability and readability. Uh -huh. um, putting every single uh, aspect, you know, on, on the same document has been... To me, it doesn't work. Like I just, I, my mind reads it as noise. 
and especially because there is not even a visual distinction between high milestones and minor tasks, you know? So they're usually at the same level, like paint the house at the same level as design the house. Um, so I would really, really like us to, first of all, come up with a, a template for that. And I strongly suggest we, f we locate a proper timeline, uh, a dynamic timeline software. I've used one in the past where you can see, you can dive into the detail or you can just look at the big picture. It allows you that kind of thing. I think we really need those dynamic documents because otherwise there's just too much noise. Sure. I don't know of any software that allows rapid change and the dynamic aspect I think. that's manageable. But yeah, if right. you can find one, that would be great. I do know one, but unfortunately it's not open source. And okay. Uh, let me see. I've used it in the past. i gotta got to remember what it was called. I mean, I, I, to, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've looked up a lot of different, and I've been searching as well. And But today it seems like the most, the common factor is training. Training. Um, it's the human. It's the human dynamic, and then because uh, you can have a great tool. I mean, that's example, it has to be simple. It's a great tool. I, mean, I don't believe in uh, in many ways. Right. Uh, in terms of simplicity and being able to do it, but mastery of the wiki, I think, is the key. So either you, and whatever tool you do, you should have to do some training so that person can master it. The better that they're better. using yeah. the tool, the faster they can get stuff done. Right. Okay, so so the one I'm the one I'm talking about is a time glider. Okay. Uh, I really really like it. I've used it in the past, um, and it yeah. allows you to have uh, sub timelines and all of that. Unfortunately, it's proprietary and paid. Right. And the question that is, how long does it take you to update? Is it a fraction it of a second or is it uh, half a minute? Editing it is 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 really quickly. You just you gotta go. You gotta navigate there, just like you gotta navigate to the wiki and open the edit. And you know, it is it is. I you, you try it. See if see if you find it. Okay, easy. that might be possible as long as the database aspect is not separated from the visual representation. That would work. Is that the case? Um, what do you mean by that? In other words, you can graphically change the switch drag the lengths no problem it has to be cloud editable so that people have to be anyone can go in there and you can drag it to extend it and shrink it well i don't i mean it is it is edible by groups of people but not cloud editable in the sense that you say where ever, any person with no credentials can log in and change it well uh i mean we got to find a solution what we, I, i'm not saying it's time glider i'm just saying what we have right now that's just an example yeah i mean okay. it's, you know. it's really like it's it's to me it to me personally it's a huge obstacle you know what i mean okay it's something that makes me i i, I it makes my, my work a lot harder well I, I think i have a sweet proprietary solution with google docs but talking about proprietary google docs the next step is there are, there are the cloud editable open source versions coming out now so that's it's a shift we want to make so continuing so sequencing um, so sequencing is that um, that would be a nice document to have what as far as like if you're talking about a project that's within the context of a longer development period like what came before and after that project like this like for example <clears throat> to document the sequencing it's, it would be useful to document that for example we have all these OSC machines that can be used for OBI then after that, what some of the notions of the steps after are. Like, for example, I'm very curious what's going to happen. I mean, what, what are your plans for after August of 2018 and stuff like that? And that would help orient people to, to show them, to inspire them and to give them perspective. Um, I, so. I do have a, 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 a question about sequencing. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's been another thing I've struggled with in the past is that this, this 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 makes a lot of sense if you're starting a project from scratch. But as you just pointed out, this is a, these are ongoing projects, and what happens is, you know, in the beginning of the annual planning, we not only have the things that we already did in the past that we already accomplished, but we also have delays. We we are inheriting a debt, right, from the previous year. Debt time-wise, things that weren't done. So I would also like us to 
really consider how we fit delays into the into the annual planning and on my protocol suggestion what I what I suggest is that the first very first thing we do is we assess how the things that did not get done are what p role those things play on this year's goals meaning if they are not necessary for this year's goals we can drop them if they are necessary then they need to be incorporated in the sequencing yeah in this method there are no delays we get rid of them or we put more energy into them I use one of those steps. There are, like, objectively <laughs> speaking, delays do exist. Right? And I can prove it. <laughs> no, we just theoried it out. Okay, uh -huh. next next thing is the... So sequencing, I was initially thinking about sequencing of what follows what within the project, but here I actually made the definition of what where this project derives from. It's like the genealogy of the project. Why? Because the sequencing of the project itself should be clear from the roadmap and critical path like that has to have sequencing very well thought out like you need to do this before that and so forth unless you can parallelize it okay so roadmap is a more generalized document that shows the overall scope of the project like i would refer to the osc roadmap the 20-year plan to show people the greater framework Okay, task breakdown that's a critical thing that so that task should be broken down to the smallest possible such that shortest is like one day or even half a day duration so task breakdown structure like TBS or WBS like work breakdown structure oh I really like that because one of the things I, I, I have an issue then is like how small or how big do you go in terms of detail that mm -hmm. definition of half a day and one day mm -hmm. makes sense absolutely absolutely it's been carefully thought out right. uh -huh. No, the practice was that it, that on the roadmaps of before, the least the least thing I would put in there is something that takes half a day. Other, if it's any smaller, then it's part of something that's that's a bigger task. So, because you can't, it's like there's a limit to how much how many items you can track, and a day unit is a great day. Thanks to Jesus. But how okay. do you how do you then we need another way to keep track of those smaller things that are not big enough to be here but that we often drop the ball on yeah so that would be i would say that would go into the supporting documents we have a task breakdown and various supporting documents to say okay well we need to we need to mow the lawn there right or move the dog or something okay uh task breakdown very important and the eventual thing is the task breakdown should really be uh, approaching what you would call a calendar because in a calendar you put down down to day tasks so the task breakdown structure also validates the timelines and workflows by making dependencies clear so just the more granular you can get for any task the the better you are and if you if the you know, there's no nothing that says if you you know if you say you're trying to plan your day really carefully, which a lot of times there's not the time for that. But if you do, then you might put down things lower than a day if you're planning task breakdown for the day. So so it depends where you're at. Um, okay. So supporting documents, supporting documents should be indexed under a known taxonomy, just like all of those planning assets are here. So they can be found by anyone. So one of the challenges for supporting docs, it's like you've got a whole bunch of supporting stuff. What is it? Why is it relevant? Do people? How do people find it? So just make it, make it a pay attention so it's indexable and accessible to others in the project, uh, so that people can find use in it. Okay. So planning process automation. So the the theory here is that if we get a cultural understanding of the process and all the different steps are outlined in this process when you get more and more people on board could become self-teaching or autonomous in operation that's that's the eventual goal that can be it's so well defined that you can you can do automation on in various ways like like for example using business process management software like you know say you're checking in whether someone completed a design task that can perhaps be automated when it's like clockwork and when you when you 
uh, have a process well mapped out. And um, so, so the keys to that are knowing what, you, what different assets you're working with from the taxonomy. The self-verifiability is a cool thing. It's like everything should have a hyperlink. So I'm referring to the process like our development template. You have a hyperlink to see whether something's been done or not, how much of it has been done. You have to go ask somebody. You can look at their log or look at the link to their work and find out exactly where the, what the status is. Logging. Um, contributors want to log everything that they do so that others can find their information, assuming that people understand that culture, that they, they know what the team is and they can look up every, every other person's work to help to coordinate. So agility is the, um, is the aspect of, of easily updatable documents. If we get good at scripts and computers, we can, we can actually write automated processes for updating various documents and so forth. And again, that gets more into automation aspects, which we don't have a lot of experience with. But in principle, you can, you can, like, if you can script it in, like, in your protocol, you can possibly script it in computer language too. So it leaves the opportunity for automation of various processes. Because the, then the fact is that we have an economy that's based on, once again, as I, I talked about initially in this presentation, an economy not based on large, large organizations and, and big startup barriers, but a fully distributed economy based on tribes and, and local adaptation and full meaning of needs as opposed to the one-size-fits-all kind of deal. So, so we're innovating here on organizational structure, first to reach milestones such as Wikipedia and Linux, where each of those get billion dollars worth of contributions per year, and then exceed that to the humbly trillion level, of course. So there's huge potential. Enough on that. Here's a um, planning methodology in a nutshell, just those assets without any text. And here's an abstract, which you don't want to hear because it's too abstract. And um, uh, talking about MVPs, for the usual case, this would be what we've talked about here is the full process. And I would say if you want to strip this down because you don't have resources, your team is not built up, select the most critical aspects that you're going to get to. You definitely want to have a critical path document. Uh, so so in the, the MVP of this entire process is make sure you have a critical path with meaningful steps that you've thought about as much as you can before you start. Because I wouldn't start any project without some document that's, that's measured against time and, and, and steps. So you got to do at least that for the duration of the project. Thank you very much. Any questions? Um, yeah. No, I think that's, that was good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Should I stop this okay. recording or do you want to go through your, your well, process? I just have a few questions real quick. Sure. Are you still there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what are the consequences of not using this stuff? Sucking. Being average. <laughs> Producing average results. This average results. Right? Or mediocre results. Not changing the world. <laughs> but we're talking here about organization, <laughs> peak performance, using a voluntary effort. So one of the side effects of not, not being effective or not planning is that because the costs are going to be higher, you're probably going to have to have more resources to do that. So um, if you don't do it, you're going to pay more. You're going to be slower. You're just going to perform a little less. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Yeah, I think no, no you, you actually don't plan to fail. You plan okay. to do nothing. It's not you don't plan to fail. Classes. And one of the interesting statements that they said was that the agile method, you know, required or worked well with certain groups versus other groups, and that was pretty interesting. So, well, I would. So I think one element. Yeah. Okay. Oh, definitely. So I think one element of there is that. You know, it's the people that are involved, and that's a that's a you know a variation that we can address definitely by giving you know some people opportunity to get a like some immersion, but also to some exposure to this kind of training. Well, I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is yes, this is a higher skilled process. If you want to be told what to do, mm -hmm. 
go to a company and work in a, in a waterfall process. They just tell you what to do. But here you have the additional responsibility of thinking and evaluating and constantly going in a circle, refining each step after you. So it's a process for responsible people, more respon requires more responsibility, and therefore more training, uh, which I would call actually primarily cultural training, because once you get the principles behind this, you see that that would probably make a lot of sense. Just get jump in there. It's a complex process until you see it and see how it makes sense. I think you got to learn by doing. Jump in there. I mean, there's standard stuff about open source, like product product development in general. There's standard planning and I mean all the literature that is there on on product development. This is kind of embodied in here. Pro product development, project planning. We use all those tools and kind of move take away. Take the main takeaways from those tools, use common tools, and then build build upon them based on, I mean, you can definitely look up Scrum and Agile as some of the processes used. This is all building upon former stuff. We didn't talk much about quality control here. That's more in a product development methodology lesson planning, but definitely metrics. And you know, this is all standard stuff adapted for open source product development. Okay. You know, if you yeah. Have a roadmap, if you don't have a roadmap, well, guess what? You're going to be lost, right? Uh, or without sequencing, hey, without knowing the timing of when this is going to be, you're going to do, get it all out of order, and then that's going to mess up um, not only everything, but it's going to put you in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I've done that before, and you know. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to add to that. So now, yeah. no, actually, uh, I want to add to that because the why is very important. And the, the main thing is if you don't have a roadmap, you don't even know if you're on track. You just, you just any road gets you there. If you don't have a, a plan, any road gets you there. Meaning that, you know, you're kind of, you know, kind of sleepwalking through life as opposed to a setting specific deliverable goals and checking whether you're actually doing that. That's if you want to have specific uh, lofty goals that you want to achieve, this definitely helps it. And the bigger why question is, we're talking about developing a new paradigm altogether of development where people understand a common language and that process becomes the norm in society because it's more efficient. An open source development process, all the techniques are known, there's a big focus on training, so it's a huge learning opportunity for people and it plain produces results. The goal is to show results that are fast. It's basically Skunkworks level results. Skunkworks as in super rapid development projects where people would relegate their hygiene secondary to product results. So <laughs> the word comes from Lockheed Martin and here it uh, basically we with an open source process I believe we can attain Skunkworks type results as the norm um, because we're not spending any energy on competitive waste we're spending the the time binding aspect is very critical here we have open access to all prior knowledge and we leave a full paper trail for anybody to learn from this that means you eliminate countless hours of repeated work and if applied to critical items of civilization this changes the world. It provides a new paradigm for how products are developed. So the, the stakes are very high, but unless you invest in a significant methodology to get to with a team, with your tribe, you know, I think this could be totally relevant to the tribal scale, which is 24 to like 150 people. So those people have to understand the common process and then if they do the the collaborative effort, I mean the the results could be just spectacular and 
and you can be leading a life where you're making making a living but doing exactly what you want with your life because you're not struggling to make ends meet or just to meet material security issues so that promises has got huge ramifications upon lifestyle and the future of the world economy environmental issues once people in that more agile process use more local resources so this is this is a profound shift that i think is is coming and as as uh, the whole economy gets more efficient i think this is simply inevitable and the writing on the wall, even in the product development literature, if you look at open source product development page on a wiki, the writing on the wall there is that leading academic papers are saying, literally, open source product development, modular open source product development, is the way things are going to happen in the future. So read those papers and appreciate it. When I, when I read that, I was blown away. It's like the leading theory says this is inevitable. So I'm encouraged by that. And Dr. Rina, did we answer a lot of the questions that you have? I mean, yeah. is, is this helpful in terms of like the different methodologies of planning? I'm sure there's a lot of process, but what are your thoughts? No, I mean, uh, th this was very helpful. I guess what 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 my my issue was before is that we haven't actually followed this plan. <laughs> It's a question of resources, available resources. One of the, no, I mean, let's address that point. One of the learnings behind my fervent effort of getting a full HR effort going is the recognition that to do justice to any of these open source product development tasks requires efforts much, much bigger than ourselves. And that's right, just the plain but bottom line. I could line. also argue that we're not talking about product development in the CSIS, we're talking about planning. How can we onboard and effectively use people's times and contributions if we don't have a proper plan, right? And that's been the drama, is that we do have people offering to, to help, but we can't absorb them or, you know, set them up for success because we have not taken the time to plan. Well, yeah, we don't have infrastructure, but the point is that even to generate the infrastructure, it's easier to, because no, of the scope of the... is physical stuff, right? It's process. Software, it's process, it's training, it's a lot of right. no, various assets. We're not talking about training or, or any or software or anything. We're talking about just the most basic thing of what are we going to do this year, right? And how are we going to do it? That's one of the many steps in, in a huge process, yes. We, I mean, we're running into the pickle now because we don't have energy, but the point is what we're trying to do here is to kill that pickle for people going into the future. But if we've never actually done the plan ourselves, how are we killing that pickle? If we don't actually do Well, here plan? we're starting by, by doing the proper planning methodology and, and doing and it that's, ourselves. That's what I, but that's what I'm doing. Now we got to act on this methodology. I'm of not course. saying every single item of this, but we got to actually follow this instead of just saying, oh, let's do a critical path. I love it when a plan comes together. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thanks. All right. So is that it for the recording? That's Any it. last words?